Good afternoon and happy National Breastfeeding Awareness Month. Um, welcome to the Love Healthy Miami Gardens Facebook Live Weekly Health and Wellness Series brought to you by the City of Miami Gardens, Love Healthy Miami Gardens. Our goal is to bring our community information and resources to help us make the healthiest choices possible for ourselves as a Miami Gardens community and our families. My name is Katia Harris. I'm Community Health Data Specialist at Jesse Trice Community Health System, Program Manager of our Breastfeeding Touchpoint Program based out of Jesse Trice Miami Gardens, member of Live Healthy Miami Gardens and your host for today. Live Healthy Miami Gardens was born from the realization that although health is largely influenced by our individual choices, the conditions in the communities where we live, learn, work, worship, and play are also major contributing factors to the racial and ethnic health disparities and health care disparities faced, as well, as our, as well as our overall ability to make healthier choices. We know that these conditions are systemic, historical, and continue to impact us as communities of color and a whole here and now. Live Healthy Miami Gardens is a community initiative and part of the city's efforts to address these conditions and reduce poor health outcomes through the transformation of policies, our environment, and the healthcare system overall, making the city of Miami Gardens a healthier place to be. August is Breastfeeding Awareness Month as I said before, um, and to celebrate, Breastfeed Miami hosted a series of events, um, including the Big Latch On alongside the national event for over the last 10 years, the Colors of Breastfeeding photo shoot with local breastfeeding families, and this weekend's Art of Breastfeeding exhibition at the Little Haiti Cultural Center, in which 24 local artists and their artwork were featured and breastfeeding advocates were available with resources for our families. Today's Facebook Live will feature a virtual exhibition celebrating the beauty and diversity of breastfeeding, chest feeding, and pump feeding families, as well as two of our exhibiting artists and moms, Anique Duvivier, new mom of a precious baby girl who's actually in the heart of her own pump feeding journey, as depicted in Anique's piece, Nikki Journey, as you'll see a little later, and Sophia Lacroix, Program Manager of FIU College of Medicine's Green Family Foundation Neighborhood Health, no stranger to Live Healthy Miami Gardens as she also serves as a member, and artist of Bay Tete. If I mispronounced that, she'll correct me later. Um, so let's start with uh, Sophia by Tete. Um, Sophia Lacroix, um, again, her painting by Tete is a 24 by 20 uh, oil on canvas piece. Um, I'll show it in a little bit if I can. But Sophia, can you tell us, um, first tell us a little bit about yourself and then tell us about your art. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for having me, Kecha. Um, I'm so proud to be here as a long-standing member of Live Healthy Miami Gardens, primary health sub-council member, and a community partner with the city of Miami Gardens through FIU's College of Medicine, Green Family Foundation, Neighborhood Health. So about me, um, I am a program manager for FIU for a neighborhood health program um, because I love community work and I love helping. But um, as long as I can remember, I have been an artist and I've always worked part time as an artist. So I've been an artist now for um, uh, over 25 years. I've had um, some success as an artist, I've been publishing books, receives a variety of awards from municipalities. Um, um, recently, I was, um, I found out that I'm one of five artists selected by the city of North Miami to uh, showcase my work in their URAP North Miami project. So soon you'll be seeing some of my artwork on the traffic light boxes throughout the city of North Miami. Um, I'm honored to have been part of this show because my most important accomplishment, I must tell you, is having been a mom, having had the privilege of being a mom, became a mom late, and it's the most amazing job on earth. I had my own breastfeeding journey, um, which is why I was inspired to create the painting. The painting is about uh, somebody very dear to me who had what I hoped would be my 
Hi, Ingrid, to be my breastfeeding journey. But um, each mother experiences differently. So that's what I hope to share with you during the segment. Thank you for having me. I, I hope uh, that's that's what we needed to hear. <laughs> yes, and thank you for joining us, um, Sophia. I don't know if, I'm trying to share my screen. I don't know if you can see her piece. Um, can you tell us a little, oh, thank you, nice. Good job. Tell us a little bit about your, um, about your, your piece. Okay, so um, what I didn't share with you is that recently after being an artist, a self-taught artist, um, I paint in oils. My style is called hyperrealism. After being an artist all these years, I decided to uh, go to art school. So I'm an art student at FIU and I've been learning a little more about art. I decided to combine my style, which is hyperrealism, photorealism, with a little bit of impressionism in the background. So if you can tell, the foreground is very real and the background is more um, abstract, if you will, more colorful. I painted this about my really wonderful best friend who happened to have been pregnant at the same time as me, but gave birth a few months before me. She had an amazing uh, breastfeeding journey. It came easy to her, it came natural to her. I was all gone, whole, happy, excited. That's gonna be me, but my experience was not the same. So I created, I happened to have taken these uh, photos of her back then when I was like nine months pregnant. And I said, you know, I'm gonna put these aside and someday I'm gonna create a painting from these beautiful pictures. Yeah, I was just inspired by her. And then, um, so this opportunity came. What I did with the color choices is I picked colors that she loves. She loves burnt orange and these colors. So um, I just combined that just with my hyper-realistic style. And it's about, the connection, if you'll see the connection between the eyes of the baby and the mom um, that exists and the love that you see mm -hmm. in a mother's face while they're bonding through the breastfeeding journey. That's so very important journey. Thank you, Sophia. And I love your piece. I love the chunky, juicy baby. Um, it's just everything that it is depicting. Uh, we, I sincerely um, appreciate your contribution to the exhibition um, and to the cause. Um, now we're going to uh, show uh, Anik's um, NICU journey piece, which is a 23 by 19 mixed media on canvas. Um, in fact, she actually has it in her background. Um, Anik, can you tell us a little bit about your piece um, and then um, a little bit about yourself? Yes, of course. So hi everybody, my name is Annie Duvivier. I'm a, I'm a mixed media artist, I'm from Haiti. I studied visual arts, uh, fine arts in the Dominican Republic and I had recently had a bachelor's in visual arts at Miami International University of Art and Design. So I've been here for about six years and um, I love the art scene here. And recently I had a baby and she was a 24 week uh, premature so we just spent 110 days in the NICU at Nikos Hospital. And I wanted to, with this piece, to show the struggle of a mom expressing milk for her baby because I was not able to breastfeed. Um, I'm still not able to breastfeed. She has been home for a week now. And so I'm expressing milk for her every three hours. And I did not see any pictures of mom pumping. It was all happy mom smiling, holding their babies breastfeeding and that that was not my experience and i decided to why, why not create it myself and in the background i collaged all the stickers of the NICU you know the stickers that they give you at the hospital every time with your picture the timestamp. so that's what i have in the background that makes it even more real yes and um just to talk a little bit about hers as well um uh, thank you um anik when she first showed me the piece, um, it was virtually. So, I mean, it's already amazing and powerful, impactful piece. Um, and I saw that it was mixed media, but didn't realize what aspect of it was the mixed media until I saw it in person and realized these were the actual stickers you, you received from the hospital visits. Yeah. Um, that's powerful. Um, and I and how, is, how is, excuse me? I painted that piece 
at the NICU, at the hospital. Yeah, I wish I'd had some pictures. In between pumping sessions. Sometimes right. it was at night, sometimes it was in the morning. So sometimes it was just painting 30, 30 minutes a day. I'm, I focus on, okay, I'm going to say, I'm going to do one bottle. I'm going to do one strain of hair. I'm going to do one little thing because that's the only time I had. But I wanted to make the piece to be part of the show. Right. And I really, we really appreciate that, um, your dedication, your determination, um, despite it all. Uh, why was it important for you to do this piece? To make sure if it's just a little strand of hair for that day that you, you included that little strand of hair for, for um, the exhibition or just to create that piece? Why was it? That I wanted to show moms that it doesn't only have to be a baby at the breast that you can still provide for your baby. You can still provide the milk. And I wanted to give my breast milk to my baby because she's been through so much. And I know that it's going to give her a healthier immune system. It's going to create more a more solid bond. She's going to be she's going to be better. So right. even harder so that I really wanted to make that sacrifice for her. Beautiful. Um, we're getting a lot of comments in. Um, Ingrid says, Anika piece is a true visual of breastfeeding. Um, and Sophia, why was it important for you to uh, do your piece? It was important because I wanted to show the joy that I was not fortunate to experience. Like Anik, uh, except for the, the NICU experience, my child was born one ounce above the um, threshold of five, uh, four. She was born at five, five pounds. So she, she was not, she was small. She was not an EQ, but she was early. And I don't know if that contributed to not her, just like Anik's baby, not latching on and my not producing enough milk, but my body would not cooperate. And I was, I was taken by surprise. Um, the whole, my whole pregnancy, because I was an older mom, I got pregnant, pregnant late. I, I, I read everything, um, uh, what to know uh, when you're expecting, the websites back then, 12 years ago, and nowhere did it say that there was a chance that I would not be able to produce enough milk and that my child would not latch on. I thought it was a given that I was going to experience this. Yeah. And I didn't even bother putting um, uh, bottles in my um, on my sh list, um, uh, on my maternity list, but I had my breast pump and I mm -hmm. had everything. I had everything for that, down to the cream for the nipples. And when my child at the hospital would not latch on and because she was hungry, they told me, go ahead and give her a bottle. I, I was shocked. I ran directly to the store to get those bottles. When I left the hospital, my husband went home with the baby and I went to shop for the bottles. I was so surprised and I kept doing everything, being Haitian. I ate all the, what we call militon the and the food. banana, all the food, drank the oatmeals, did everything. Nothing worked. I, I she just, my body wouldn't cooperate. The baby wouldn't latch on. I just didn't understand. So what I, I'm, I'm saying this because I really, really think that there needs to be conversations, not after the baby is born, but leading up to in the hospital rooms. I'm, I know there are some conversations, but I think there needs to be more in-depth conversations about all the possibilities, what you do if you are a successful breastfeeder and what to do if you are facing these challenges. Part of it needs to be to telling the mom that you're not a failure. I felt like a mm -hmm. failure. I was an accomplished artist, accomplished in my professional life, but I couldn't feed my baby. And that was, that was humiliating, not, not humiliating, that, that was disappointing to me. And I know other women can relate. It was devastating to me when I found out like I was I was expressing milk and then it, they increased her feed. I was able to do all eight feeds and then now suddenly I'm doing only three. I was like, but I need to feed my baby, but there's mm -hmm. nothing I could do. They told me do skin to skin. They gave me an award at the hospital for the mom being the most doing skin to skin with my baby. But still the milk just it doesn't come up. It, it doesn't and, come up naturally. 
And this is why programs like yours, Ketja, and by the way, everyone, Ketja is an accomplished artist too, who did a piece for that <laughs> show. I, I know she doesn't tune her own horn, but man, is she amazing. Um, but I, I will tell you that there are a lot of programs now that I work for FIU and I work for Neighborhood Help, and I'm in touch with all these organizations. Um, organize, programs like ours, Neighborhood Help, where you have access to the support system, you have a network of not only program specialists, like in my program, you have somebody assigned to you, dedicated to you, that you can talk to, to find out resources that have access to doctors. And you have partnership with organizations like Live Healthy Miami Gardens, where we can refer you. If you need that information, you can access it, and especially with technology being what it is, there's more information. But you don't know what you don't know yeah. on, until it happens to you. you <laughs> right. Know? Moms, just <laughs> pregnant moms, just think about all the possibilities. And I wish I had been like my friend. She produced so much milk. She was, it was so amazing. But, um, you know, that was her experience. Right. Um, and I know you shared before that um, these were some of the resources that um, you wish you had in place. Uh, right, Sophia? Absolutely. I wish that I had had somebody to call like, like a program specialist at Neighborhood Help that could refer me to you, Kitcha, and to other programs, to doulas. Uh, Metro Mommy Agency is one. You know, there's, a, that, there's a breastfeeding um, line 24 hours open. There's a nurse so that, line open 24 right. hours. Yeah. There's the lactation consultant at the WIC um, program. There's the La Leche Orti, the La Leche League. There's so many things available, but you don't even know about these things until you're you're sitting in the problem and then you're you're looking for help. So there are there, there's ICU babies that also help me. Like even just a phone call does so much for, for a new mom. For and moral support. Moral right. support, definitely. Yeah. I thank God for WIC. I was a good WIC client. They helped me with the formula, thank God, at the time. But I, I knew nothing of, I didn't even know I should mention it, you know, just, you don't know. You don't know, yeah. Right. With the breast pump. And um, I even had a, a latching session this morning again, <laughs> trying to have the baby to latch. But she latched for like 10 minutes and then she lets it go. I'm like, okay, but when is she going <laughs> to start breastfeeding? I want her to breastfeed already. I'm like, no, you have to be patient. The baby's learning. The mommy's learning. It's a, it's a whole process. Right. Now, despite the, with the challenges and the circumstance, why do you choose to continue pumping? I want my baby to be healthy. That's right. like the, the, my, my biggest motivation. Cause she's been through, through so much. She had an operation, she had infections, she had feeding tubes. I've seen her at her worst, swollen, blue. Now I just, I just want her to be healthy. I know the formula has, is okay. I know she's a fed baby's best, but she still has colics, she's constipated, you know, there's, there's all these other issues that comes with the formula. And uh, the when she's breastfeeding, when she's drinking my milk, <laughs> right? Because right. she she's well. She's well. Beautiful. And how is Talia now? She's doing good. She's sleeping right here. She's been home for a week now. So I, I've been not sleeping. <laughs> oh yeah, sleep, sleep is over. I forgot sleep. <laughs> oh, you are happy. So happy at the same time. So happy. Beautiful. Um, and she's gorgeous. I mean, she's yeah. so Thank beautiful. You. Thank you. And if you um, check her out at um, her Instagram, Anique Duvivier, um, you could uh, check out more of her work. And there's some images of um, your baby in your journey. Yes, on my stories, I posted a lot of pictures today of me painting the the paint the artwork and at the hospital, video of that and the baby. You can see her. Beautiful. The whole and, process. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And Sophia, um, uh, do you want to share your um your Instagram or Twitter where you have your art, or you want to share the Instagram for um Florida Neighborhood Health? I'd like to do both um, for uh, FIU's Neighborhood Health Program. Our Instagram is FIU Neighborhood Health. So F-I-U-N-E-I-G-H-B-O-R-H-O-O-D-H-E-L-F. 
H E L P. And my Instagram is Sophia underscore Lacroix underscore artist. Um, I posted pictures of that painting, but also uh, some photo montage of my process um, while doing the piece and other pieces. Um, I've tried to do time lapse, it's, it's challenging. Um, I'm sure there are pictures of my daughter who's now 12 and as tall mm -hmm. as I am. Um, you know, the, uh, the, the WIC formula the, that I was able, the formula that I was able to buy from WIC really did its job and she's excelling academically, she's strong. So I'm very grateful. She's an amazing artist herself. She's a little artist, she's a graphic <laughs> artist. Um, very, very amazing. You know, parents were always in awe of our children. And Anik, you can experience all that beautifulness. It's just, it's so amazing. And um, Ketia, you have an adorable little one too. Uh, we all, all three of us have daughters. So yeah. <laughs> it, it's such a privilege to be a mother. mother. That's the best thing ever in life. It is. Um, definitely. Uh, like I said, I, I'm laughing because my daughter has so much energy, but no, uh, and she has an amazing sense of humor, but it is a privilege. It is an honor. Um, and with that, though, comes the mommy duties. Um, and if I am rushing a little bit, I apologize because I know uh, both of our guests uh, will have to leave soon to tend to their own mommy duties. Um, so <laughs> just to, to wrap up, um, if nothing else, uh, what advice uh, would you like to share with families who are breastfeeding or considering breastfeeding or experiencing um, some challenges with breastfeeding? Uh, do you want me to go first? Either one, yeah, you could go first. I'm always ready, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, like I said before, just um, be aware of all possibilities. Hope for the best, the best being being able to breastfeed with your baby latching on and producing enough milk. And with the worst case scenario, your baby not latching on and having to resort to bottles and having your bottle warmer ready and all the bottles. Um, Anik told me that now they make... Uh, 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 nipples for bottles for children who, who are that are flat for babies who don't latch on. So yeah, just have all the information at your disposal and hope for the best. And don't don't get discouraged. Don't feel like it's your fault. It's don't don't. There are enough things to worry about. It's not your fault. It's just nature. Right. Uh, so oh, I'm sorry. You are Sophia. Anik, uh, do you want to add on? Well, I would encourage mothers to breastfeed, but the same thing, if it's not possible, like they told me at the hospital, a fed baby is best. So be open to other possibilities, but I still encourage breastfeeding. <laughs> Beautiful, thank you. Um, and if uh, for our viewers uh, who's looking for resources, if you check out the Consortium for Healthy Mommy Dates um, website under, I believe Healthy Baby Task Force, it does have resources to many of our community partners, including WIC, as well as Jesse Trice Community Health System and other um, partners throughout Miami Day who can assist um, in your breastfeeding and lactation journey. Um, so on back on the art side, what are some exhibitions or projects that um, you two have coming up? Well, Go I ahead, Annie. I have a show coming up in uh, the second week of September. It's at Futurama Gallery. It's a, it's a Virgin show for La Caridad del Cobre, which is the Virgin Mary of Cuba. So I have cool. a piece that's going to be there soon. So I'm very excited about that. Cool. Congratulations. Congrats. And Sophia? Uh, for, for me, it's. Uh, so, Sophia? So, uh, being an art student is going to keep me terribly busy this, uh, this semester, uh, but. I, you'll soon see my artwork, I think, before the end of September, early October um, on uh, boxes, on uh, uh, traffic light boxes um, on the city, in the city of Miami, North Miami, rather. Thank you. All right, thank you. And congratulations to you as well. Um, any final thoughts from um, either of you? 
Just thank you. Thank you everyone for tuning in on this very important topic. I welcome you to join uh, Green Family Foundation Neighborhood Help. It's on the banner right now. Um, if you would like to be part of our program at FIU, it's 305-919-4594, or you can access uh, us on Twitter and on Instagram. We'll be happy to help and enroll you in the program and link you, which will help link you to services, including if you're uninsured, a free primary care on our mobile health center and or link it to our many, many health partners. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, uh, thank everybody as well, um, especially all the people that helped me during my time in the NICU, the lactation consultant, the nurses, the doctors, um, all the organization that helped me I see you, I see you uh, baby, I see you babies. <laughs> um, La Leche League, Roxio Velasquez, um, Leah, all these people that have been calling me and supporting. It's really, really encouraging. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to you, Katia, as well. And yes, thank you, Katia. No problem. And thank you to um, the both of you um, for joining us today on the Facebook Live, for being, um, for, for agreeing to be artists for our breastfeeding exhibition, for being advocates um, of the protection, promotion, and support of breastfeeding. Um, we thank those who, um, all of the, the partners um, during our presentation, you will see um, all the list of partners who um, took the lead in uh, creating this 2021 20, uh, Breastfeed Miami um, and just sharing your experiences um, we wanted, we really wanted to, for this exhibition, um, show an appreciation for the diversity um, in breastfeeding and that diversity uh, where true, it does come in with uh, the diversity in race and ethnicity in breastfeeding, especially promoting that um, black women do breastfeed. Um, breastfeeding is natural, so it's not a race thing. But, um, Aside from the fact it's a human race thing, but also um, showing the diversity in the experiences, um, as you heard today from Anika as well as Sophia, um, and you'll see visually, uh, you'll see with um, by our other artists um, in our presentation. Um, just before we get to that. Um, I just want to share that um, we have coming up um, a Girl Talk event this Friday um, in the heart of Black Breastfeeding Week, hosted by WIC Miami Dade, as well as Jesse Trice Community Health System, um, August 27th at 3 o'clock p.m. Um, you can, if you can, you can. Um, hit the QR code. I just figured out how to use QR codes. <laughs> um, so you could uh, use your camera to hit the QR code and register. Um, it'll be featuring Misha Ebhadamin, um, also known as the Nurse Milk on Instagram. She's an RN and a certified lactation uh, educator. Um, and she'll be discussing the history of breastfeeding in the black community, empowering women of color to breastfeed, your breastfeeding rights, returning to work and pumping, as well as handling family pressure while breastfeeding. Um, as well, we'll also be having um, three raffles uh, during the event. We usually, and this will take place during our um, regular uh, virtual breastfeeding cafe peer support group. Um, so we'll have a component where we'll have our normal breastfeeding peer support group and then uh, Misha to do her presentation and we'll have a Q&A. So we hope that you join us for that. Um, and now we'll have our presentation. Thank you to, again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, uh, an additional thank you to, to Sophia for helping put up our exhibition. I can finally say I curated a show. <laughs> I created a show that's not my own, other artists. That was such an honor. Thank you so much. And to Diana Ragby Murphy. Yes. Wow. And of course, Cheryl Laurier. Um, so many other people. This was such an amazing show. And of course, Anik, your husband, all the wonderful people. What amazing first of many shows, annual shows. That's See awesome. you there next year, everyone. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Now we'll have our presentation. Thank you again. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. 
think we're having some technical difficulties. We just give us a moment.
And thank you again to our sponsors um, and to our partners, um, especially Kiwanis and Northeast Miami-Dade um, and Diana Ragbeer murray um, the Florida Department of Health uh, in Miami-Dade County, and Cheryl Laurier, the Children's Movement of Florida, and Rocio Velasquez. Um, I know I'm going to forget some names. Just forgive me. Um, the Consortium for Healthy in Miami-Dade, the Children's Trust, the Little Haiti Culture Complex, Jesse Trust Community Health System, um, the Community Medical Group, Nicholas Children's Hospital, of course, Live Healthy Miami Gardens, as well as to all of our partners, all of our artists um, who also served as panelists, uh, to those who came out to the event, those who are um, joining us today during our stream, and those who may join us later um, in the recording. Um, thank you to our community. And we just hope you continue to join us in our efforts, um, especially as we move more into our advocacy efforts um, in the protection, promotion, education, uh, and support of breastfeeding. Uh, well, I hope you have a great rest of your day. I hope that you also join us as we close out National Breastfeeding Awareness Month this Friday and live healthy, Miami Gardens. Thanks, bye.